In this video, we're going to derive the push forward or Jacobian vector product rule for scalar root finding. You can think of scalar root finding as a function that takes an argument, a scalar argument, let's call it theta, and then is given implicitly by the solution to a scalar root finding problem. So we could write solve and then a zero condition, let's call the function g, which is based on x and theta being zero for x. So we have a condition which is parameterized on theta. This function is in terms of x and this function has a couple of roots and our f function is now some kind of a wrapper which wraps a numerical algorithm that obtains the root to that equation. We want to call that output or the root x here and there are a bunch of algorithms in order to do that. An example would be so let's say for example by bisection methods, they are really common in these scalar cases, so bisection method, or you could use a Newton-Raphson scheme or many other algorithms. So the big idea is that we have this optimality condition here, which is a scalar condition, and then we have a wrapper which wraps our numerical algorithm, so giving our parameterized value produces the root to that equation. Let us assign some dimensionalities here. I already mentioned, so it's a scalar root finding problem, which means that x is a real valued number, as well as theta is a real valued number. Then g is our optimality condition. This shall be a function which takes two real valued numbers and maps them to a real valued number. And then we have f, which is our wrapper, which takes the parameter and then evaluates the numerical algorithm. And here I want to make some really strong assumption in that the function f always converges. So assume that f always converges. So we're not too interested in the technicalities of how one could implement scalar root finding algorithms, but we are rather interested in how to push forward tangent information over this solution process. So in other words, our task here is that we are to propagate tangent information on the input. So a theta dot, which is another real value number, to tangent information on the output. So to x dot, which is another real value number. Technically, if we have an implementation of this root finding algorithm, which is given in terms of differential operations, so let's say multiplication, addition, and so on, then we could already use a forward mode AD engine in order to build the push forward over the solution. However, in a lot of cases, this is not the most desirable thing to do. Since those are iterative algorithms, this adds some really high additional overhead, especially if we see how we can do this more cleverly. So here our task is to propagate from theta dot to x dot without AD through the numerical solver. So without AD through the root solver. So without AD through a bisection method or a newton raphson method. So what we want to do is to look at the definition of the push forward more generally. In that we get the tangent on the output x by taking the tangent on the input theta and multiplying it with the derivative of f with respect to theta. In a multivariate case that would be a Jacobian, that's why it's called a Jacobian vector product, but here in our scalar root finding case this is just another scalar, so we are kind of like scaling the tangent information from the input to the output. So let me note that down, this df by d theta is another revalued number. But how do we obtain that? I mean, in the end, if we used ad through the root solver, this product is what this ad would evaluate. How can we circumvent that? And the idea is that we cleverly use the implicit function theorem and in more easy terms we will take the total derivative of our optimality condition and then we will see that this quantity df by d theta naturally arises. So let us take the total derivative of the optimality condition. So total derivative of optimality condition. And this optimality condition, that was the g function, so we will take dg by d theta. And then let's take a look at g. So g depends on x and on theta. So we will have a derivative of g with respect to x. And since x can be viewed of having a nested dependency on theta, 
there is a subsequent derivative in the chain rule of x with respect to theta. And you can think of it like this. So if you change the parameter val value theta, the output to the root finding algorithm x will obviously be different. And that's because this propagation is given implicitly. So in a sense, we are getting the derivative of g with respect to x multiplied with the derivative of x with respect to theta. And then we of course have the explicit dependency of g with respect to theta. This total derivative holds to zero and the reason for that is our optimality condition is supposed to be zero. So the total derivative of something that is zero everywhere for its inputs is also zero. So this total derivative vanishes. And I hope we see now that the reason we did that is because here we have the quantity dx by the theta and that's essentially the scaling factor we are looking for but computed differently. So this is what we are looking for and it's identical to df by d theta. So df by d theta is basically the same expression as dx by d theta and the function can essentially be represented by its output so those two are identical. If we rearrange in terms for this dx by d theta we will get that dx by d theta is minus dg by d theta divided by dg by dx. And we of course can do that here because this is a scalar. So here we will have a scalar and that one is also a scalar, um, assuming of course it is not zero here. Well then we can plug that back into the push forward rule and see, so let's say plug back into the push forward and then we see that x dot is essentially minus dg by dx inverse multiplied with dg by d theta multiplied with theta dot. And if we had a multivariate case in which x and theta are not just scalars but vectors, this would induce a solution to a linear system of equations. But here in the scalar case, we can just divide by that and avoid this linear solution. So we propagate the tangent information from theta dot to x dot by scaling it first with the derivative of the optimality condition with respect to theta evaluated at the solutions from the forward pass and then scale it again with the inverse of the derivative of g with respect to x evaluated at the solutions from the forward pass. So in total we can write down the push forward operation on our root finding wrapper given the primal input theta as well as some tangent information on the input as first the solution to the root finding problem and then the propagation given by minus dg by dx to the minus one and dg by d theta multiplied with theta dot. And then we see here this is our x and this is our x dot. And an obvious question here is like how do we obtain this dg by d theta and dg by dx? And here we could just use automatic differentiation. So in our case forward mode ad. So as said those are both revalued numbers and let's say we obtain them by forward ad. So obtain by forward mode automatic differentiation. And let me again wrap up. So the reason we did that is to avoid performing automatic differentiation through the root solver. Assuming it would work, sometimes this does not work and then we would have no other choice than using this implicit differentiation here. So in a sense we avoided those propagations through the iterations of the roots over by just having some propagation involving derivatives on the optimality condition. A big thanks to all the patrons of the channel. If you also want to support my vision of free education on these advanced mathematical topics, you will find the link to the Patreon page down in the video description. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, then please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel. There is more content on automatic differentiation. Here you will now see similar videos and I hope to see you in one of the next videos.